Hey guys, Perugia here. In this video, we're going to talk about an amazing UI animation software called Protopie. Now, Protopie essentially allows you to create uh, UI animations and uh, let's uh, discover it uh, step by step. So when you first go on the website, uh, you're going to be able to download the actual software. And once you install it uh, and you click on it, uh, you're going to be redirected to this uh, very screen. Now, I highly recommend you to check out uh, the Jumpstart uh, example also such as uh, you know the basics, uh, the scrolling, conditional, since these are going to give you some brief uh, overview with real life uh, animations. But now let's uh, actually hop uh, into Figma, since uh, we're going to use uh, this uh, iOS screen in order to create uh, our very first animation. And by the way, you can uh, create uh, animations with Protopie, also with Sketch and Adobe XD. So the only thing that you really need uh, is the plugins so the on so you simply have to go under the plugins panel for example in figma go under browse plugins and uh, write in uh, protopie and uh, you're going to find uh, the actual uh, protopie plugin simply install it and uh, once you're good with that uh, you're essentially good to go so let's uh, go back uh, into the actual file and uh, let's go in the plugin section and let's uh, click on Protopie. So as you can see, we need to select the frames or the layers that we want to export. So we're going to do that. And now that the button is available, we're going to click on export. And it's just going to take a um, second in order to export this into Protopie. Now, as you can see, we have this layer outside of the frame. So we have to put it in. And this is just a reminder that uh, each and every time that you're exporting something, you need to be sure that the frames uh, or and the layers are all selected. Otherwise, they won't be displayed. And we also have another small issue that we can solve really easily. And that is that uh, we're not having the same uh, um, width when it comes to the, to the frame. So let me just center this uh, real quick. Uh, and we're going to solve this by simply clicking on this very top section. As you can see, we have all sorts of different uh, devices available and we're going to select uh, iPhone 11 Pro Max, uh, click on OK. And as you can see, we have the same exact uh, device as uh, in Figma. So let's uh, explore Protopie from a high level just before we get started with the very first animation. So at the top, you're going to have a, a few different options. Uh, here we have the import option from Figma, Adobe XD and Sketch, as we mentioned. We can also add media, which uh, isn't uh, just the design files, but we can also add the images, videos, audio, uh, also take pictures or videos with the camera or even lot of animations. And uh, we can also add the shapes uh, um, with uh, which are both uh, basic ones like rectangle, ovals, and also the iOS uh, background blur, which uh, is essentially you know that blur that you usually see on pop-ups and models on iOS. Uh, we can also add text and uh, the input. So this is a really cool feature, by the way, the input field, since it allows you to actually type in some text. So if I click on device uh, or actually on preview and I drag this in, you can see that uh, we're going to have uh, the preview of uh, our animation. As I click on it, uh, you can immediately see how the keyboard is uh, um, up and I can literally type inside the prototype, which is really, really cool and something that not many softwares allow actually. So definitely a cool feature to keep in mind when you're creating the uh, prototypes and then we have uh, the different type of containers for a scroll and paging containers and we also have uh, the components which uh, are essentially sort of uh, symbols and uh, same principle as the components in Figma more or less so definitely uh, good to keep in mind whenever you need to create something once that uh, is going to be applied in different screens essentially to save time. Now on the right, uh, we have the different basic options to preview the, proto the prototype and uh, we can also connect uh, different devices. Um, this is not really something that you're going to uh, work around all that much. And uh, we can click on run in order to run the actual prototype. 
And uh, le let's also discover these uh, two, which are essentially the cloud. So once you save uh, your protopy animation, uh, let's uh, write here protopy. I'm just going to save it to desktop. Um, I can essentially save this and upload this to the cloud by clicking on upload. And uh, the moment I do this, you can see that uh, I need to select what uh, personal space I wanted to upload it to. And uh, now it's uploading. So any animation, uh, any prototype uh, which I'm creating here in Protopy, I can upload it to the cloud and uh, visualize it real quick. But as it's uh, doing that, let's explore the very first animation. Now, when it comes to Protopy, there's three things to keep in mind that uh, compose each and every interaction. The first one is triggers. The second one is response. And the third one is objects. So let's explore a um, this concept in a, with a real example. I'm just going to delete the input field for now. And I'm going to select this object right here. I'm going to click on add trigger. Now, the moment I do that, you can see that I have all sorts of different triggers that could uh, trigger the animation. So the very most common one is going to be the tap. So let's say that if I tap on this object, on this spaceship, I'm going to have this animation, which is one of these animations right here. So let's say that uh, I want it to, to move at a certain place. So let's uh, figure out what is the value of this place right here. So y axis is going to be minus uh, 300. And let's go on the move again. And let's add that value. Now I'm going to use the default uh, X positioning here as it was suggested. And uh, let's uh, click on preview. Now I'm going to click here and as you can see, the space is going all the way up since uh, the value was uh, too high. But uh, let's try and adjust it to be just uh, uh, 73. Maybe I just added uh, an extra minus, which uh, should have been there. But as you can see, you can literally, um, yeah, was that extra minus that just happened. And uh, let's write, let's click on preview again. And the moment I do that, you can see that I created this uh, quick animation in a pretty fast way. Now, of course, there's so many other different options that uh, you can use in order to tweak this animation. You can tweak the duration. So let's say that I want it uh, to be less uh, quick. I can simply put it at 0 0.5 and it's going to be slower. Um, I can also start with a delay. So the moment I click on it, there's going to be a one second delay and uh, I can also make it uh, uh, to repeat uh, either infinite times or a couple of times. Or I can also change uh, the, the type of uh, easing options. So let's say that I want it to be spring. So we have like this nice little animation going on. We can all do that from uh, the, the settings here on the right. Now we also have a timeline here, which is going to, which can, we can literally tweak uh, around. Uh, and uh, this is going to be especially useful whenever you're having uh, multiple different options. So let's say that we want it to scale and uh, instead of uh, scaling it uh, uh, up, maybe we want to scale it down. So let's say that uh, at the moment Prot uh, Protopy is saying that it's 207. So let's say that I wanted to make it just 50 by 50. And uh, let's try that. So as you can see, we just uh, reduce the size. We can also constrain the proportions, which uh, is something that uh, can be useful in order not to have it stretched. So, or actually in this case <laughs> it did. But um, essentially what you want to do is to create uh, the, the constraints in a way that uh, work for that specific object. So as you can see, we can literally add uh, different uh, um, interactions uh, and uh, especially different responses. And I can also change uh, the response of when uh, that response happens uh, in uh, the timeline. So that is going to be particularly useful and uh, yeah, just something that uh, 
you can play around with uh, and you have uh, essentially all of the um, options at your disposal directly from uh, here. Now we're going to discuss uh, more of these uh, in uh, future videos, but just before we finish this one, I want to show you what happened with uh, the cloud upload. So we're going to upload this uh, again and uh, yeah, I want to update the changes. So as you can see, every time that you push a new version, it's going to be, uh, it's going to ask you the confirmation for that. And uh, now it's uploading and uh, Let's check uh, this right now. So I'm opening it, I'm opening it uh, up uh, right here. And uh, just one second as it's uh, uploading. And there we go. So this is going to be really useful whenever you're, you're collaborating with uh, a, another team member or developers or what you want to show this to, to stakeholders. You can literally just send them a link and have uh, and collaborate uh, together with uh, each and every individual uh, pretty easily. Here you can restart, here you can have like the touch hints in case they're clicking on, on something else and uh, you know they want to understand where they have to actually click. You can make this full screen. Um, then there's also this focus mode which essentially uh, covers up all of these other things. You can speed it up uh, and uh, you can also have other attach point or a cursor uh, point directly from here and uh, you can select uh, the uh, type of layering uh, if there are any notifications. So as you can see all the basic options which you really want and uh, you can uh, have all the access settings uh, directly here. So this is very similar to, to Figma and uh, yeah, you can essentially password pr protect it, uh, make anyone uh, view this link or only you and uh, essentially set if they can download it or not. So this is it when it comes to a brief uh, overview of Protopy. Hope you enjoyed this video. And by the way, I want to remind you that on my channel, I have over 400 videos on uh, UI UX design tutorials and also sharing my experience of uh, over 80 years working as a UX designer. So if you're interested in that, feel free to check it out. But um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.